if nobody joins as in or if nobody else have closed let's do it together i guess maybe thoda time baitha tha aaj us pe so okay okay so welcome all this is our what 73rd pc open discussion uh we'll continue with one question which you were discussing last week from sam i looked at it during the weekend and then we'll spend some time on the scenario that we were discussing as per requested by most of the people that let's do some development and code reviews together here in this meeting so let's have a look on that okay so yeah if you are here for the first time <clears throat> and you're not default attendee and you go to this link which gets normally updated by monday morning if you are here in the meeting and don't want to register every week then drop your name and email in the chat and i'll i'll make you default attendees for the future meetings so let's go back to the question that sam had last time and i i'll maybe pick his code that he have sent last time to kind of where we left it from so this was the code and let me see where that was uh, Okay, launch zero one two nine. Okay. So, <clears throat> if you want to kind of revisit what he was trying to do, is what Sam was trying to do is he created this uh, temporary table, the company name and a total sales field, which he's calculating here in this page on open trigger. And let me zoom this in. What he was calculating here. Uh, based on the change company methods and all, and then his request was to have kind of a drill down code so that it can navigate to the right company. So what I looked at it during the week, and then let me comment on this. Uh, let's give it a try. Okay. So what we want is to check that if the customer exists or not, which is our Cost dot uh, does this, or maybe let's do a cost dot change company just to verify that that company has records or not. If the customer is found, then we had a rec ref here. So we can set that rec ref based on my customer uh, record ID, and then get record. This will return me the record ref uh, of that record, which is customer in this case. Then, as we talked about last time, the page management have methods which can give us the page ID if required. And then, once we have the rec ref here, what we can do is we did look at. I guess we did look at this, which is data type management. Last time, which is a base Microsoft code unit, and this code unit have some methods which can help you if you're working with recrefs and field ref. If you look at it, there is <clears throat> there is this get recref uh, based on if you have a variant or if you have a record, this method returns you the result record ref from that. So what we can do is we can pass the customer record and then get the record. Oh, but we have already done, but that's okay. Once we have it, uh, there is this code unit uh, called page management, which can give us the page ID for that particular table that we need. Now the catch there was that the page management method has some method to get page ID. <clears throat> Let's get page ID. Then there is card page ID, lookup page ID, and then conditional page ID and all. To get inside this code unit, it has some gotchas that it doesn't return you the list pages at least for the customer table. For some reason, it works pretty well with these kind of records, but not with the customer table. And if you know that you have to like. Sam wanted to open the customer page, then you can default it to, if 
trust mill list in this case. <clears throat> so now we have the page ID and then we have the record ref against it. So we can generate our target URL. Based on the same method which you are using here called get URL, which needs a client type. We can do a client type of web. And then we can pass the second parameter as company name, which he has, is storing in this temporary table. And the next type is object type, which will be an object type of page. And then it needs the page object type and object ID. So now it needs the page ID that we have set. And what next? It needs a record or record ref for that matter. So you can actually pass the record ref that you have generated here. And then last but not least, the last parameter is use filters. If you have to use the filters, you can do that otherwise. Should be like this. Now, when I, when we click on this, this should kind of hyperlink this. We should now be able to hyperlink this target URL, which then will be open in a separate browser tab, so that we can kind of scan that page in Business Central. Okay. This should by default open that page. This is his page uh, that Sam had, and Sam is here now. So if he clicks on the Cronus USA, this should open the Cronus USA company. All the customers there. If he clicks on my company, then the URL will be generated for my company, which will navigate him to that customer page. So Sam, does that? <laughs> Kind of solves your problem. Um, yeah, a bit like a bit like hello. The thing is, I'm not supposed to view all the customers, just the customer um, ledger entries. You know, the customers that would make up the amount. That will make up the amount. Okay. So then you no, actually have to build the customer ledger into record set and that's what you need to change as and wherever it says customer you just need to change it to uh, customer ledger entry and then you'll have to figure out what filters you want to use and this way as in rest will remain same nothing changes in this <clears throat> now what makes up that amount is you're saying what makes up your total sales sales lcy more or less Right. Exactly, but in terms of entry, it's not customers. Yeah, so then you should actually have a lookup based on what? Okay, and you do, it doesn't matter which customer it is. You just need to have the customer ledger entry open. So you just need all the customer ledger entry more or less, right? It's just summing up all the customer ledger entry sales LCY. Now it's filtering it for customer if you open it from the customer card. But eventually, if you look at from what you want to open, it is actually opening all the customer ledger entries. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. So it's it's only trying to open customer ledger entries at that point. If you are opening it from this uh, page where you have already summed up the sales LCY, which is eventually calculation or a sum of all the customer ledger entry that exists in the system. So you actually don't want any filters on customer ledger entry. You just want to open customer ledger entry. Because that's how this is being calculated, right? It just sums up whatever the value on the sales LCY. You will have to ignore the customer number filter because you are trying to sum up for all the customers. And then the, all these filters are irrelevant in that case. All right, well, okay, I'll try that. Thank you, Sarah.
Okay. So yeah, this is what it is. As in, and the get, get URL function will generate you the URL based on the different tenants and different companies. <clears throat> if you have the company name, and whatever the filters that you apply gets kind of appended into the hyperlink itself as a bookmark, more or less. If you look at this URL which we have generated, it's a bookmark, and then this is a unique code that's generated from the get URL. Okay, any uh, other thoughts on this one? Yeah, go ahead. Did, did, did it just open it on a different tab? Yeah, it, it'll, it'll open in a different tab because it cannot change the company here, right, on the same page. Mm -hmm. okay. If you click on this, it should actually uh, open your environment in a different company, which is my company, wherever I'm here, I'm sitting on, oh, I'm sitting on my company. But if I click on this, it actually switches to Chromos USA. It cannot do it here. So the get URL is kind of an hyperlink, which gets open in a separate browser. Yeah, because he just, if he is, you know, hyperlink, not run yeah. mode or, okay. Right. And you can't do run model to the other company in that case. You will eventually have to use hyperlink in that situation. Yeah, okay. Okay, any questions on this one before we leave this? Sam, if you want, I can send you the segment. Maybe I'll send it in chat here. Let you have it. Okay, any other questions before we move into what we were discussing last week? No, so far clear enough. And I cannot access the chat section. Hmm. Okay, I guess I can now. Here it is, Sam, in the chat. Okay. What else? Okay, so we have a good amount of people right now. I was talking to people who joined earlier. Uh, I guess I didn't say it very clearly, but the way you we will work on this is you will have to fork this into your own Git repo. And when you kind of fork it, it kind of copies everything which is here into your Git environment where you can make your changes. And then once you are done, you can generate, create a pull request, which then will come to me to kind of, uh, you know, review here in this meeting so that we can see how, how things are going. So anybody gave it a try, did something on local, was not able to kind of connect it to Git or, or things like that. And if that's the situation, maybe we can deal with that now. Okay, if nothing, maybe we'll start that. What I've done also is well, I have... Yeah. Sorry, I uh, did some work and just now while the session started, um, but I've not been able to, you know, publish it um, on the... No, I don't know how to do it. We've never forked earlier. You have forked it? Yeah, I've forked it, uh, yes. Okay, uh, do you want to share your screen, sir? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, sure. You can see it there. So what I did was, I hope you are able to view my screen. It's loading, I guess, and I can see your mouse, but the screen is completely black for me for some reasons. Others can see. Now no, something here. I can only see the mouse cursor, and it's just. Do you want to try again? Yeah, you know, open share try and select the right screen. Maybe he's got different screens. And Sandeep, sir, we cannot hear you if you're saying something. Well, now we can't hear the voice as well. Yeah. 
let me overtake the control. Maybe then he can speak. <laughs> Go on then. He's leaving now. Oh, yeah. So while he's joining back, and that, that'll be helpful for everybody while we work on these samples as we do. What I've also done uh, during last week is also created some templates. So if you have an issue you know, in future, or if you have an enhancement requ request that we should discuss in these meeting, you can actually come into this issues area, uh, create a new issue, and then there will be three templates. Uh, if, if you find a bug, you can use this template. If there's a code enhancement that you think that we have done incorrectly, that can be done in a better way. You can use this template. If you want to add some features into the existing code repo, then you can do a feature request and then just you just do the get started and that kind of gives you a framework of what kind of info is needed. That will be more organized and it'll help us also to kind of keep working on it together. Okay, so just for the people who were not there last week, uh, let's see what we were trying to do. This request actually came uh, when we started talking about that we should do some development exercises here uh, from a YouTube comment on one of the BC open discussion session. And the person wanted to set up a workflow uh, that requires approval each time a new customer is added. And he just wanted to figure out how that's possible via AL code. I guess that was a request. So what you discussed last week is what we'll do is we have a Git repo. Uh, we discussed about how workflow works. And then we wanted to use this repo to kind of code together and then use these meetings to kind of review that code uh, every week as that's been done. Okay, so I spent what, 10 minutes before this meeting just to kind of do some rough work if nobody had anything, and I guess that was true. So here was my attempt, and I haven't put it back into source control yet, and maybe I'll, I'll put it once we finalize it. The way I wanted to start with is, as we discussed, we'll be, oh, we'll be using the prefix as BOD, and I was stuck somewhere else so I should have been used POD here okay. the habit of using this trick prefix that I have created but let's keep it simple. So what I was thinking is kind of aligning it to how it's available in different areas. So the first thing that we wanted, I guess, is to have a status field on the customer card so that we can kind of build in uh, the approval process around it and kind of block users if it is not released. Now there were two ways to handle it. Either I would have created an option field, which was still, which is still an option, and I should have created an option field, or I should have created a new enum for it. But then, uh, what I thought is it's, you know, it's easier to kind of reuse anything that's already built in. So there is the sales document status, which is available on the sales document, which gives you options of open release and pending approval and pending prepayment. Now, in case of customers, we'll not be using pending prepayment, but we'll need these three options, zero, one, and two. So what I've done here is I've limited it here to kind of limit the values that a user can choose from zero, one, and two. So no one can use actually, oh, sorry, uh, the code can also not be using this and this is already a non-editable field so user cannot change it in any case does that make sense or anybody has any better thoughts around it ok 
Okay. Now, next. Then, as this field was added into the table, we also wanted in on customer card, so I just added it on the general tab as last field on the customer card. And that's where I was kind of done, more or less. And then I wanted to move to next step. But yeah, Sandeep, sir, you're back. You want to try again? Yes. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, but I have to restart my system. Uh, and my services have not yet started. So, oh, OK. okay. Okay, so yeah, I'll I can show you the code I have written. Yeah, uh, I, I actually would like to see the fork process as in the pull request process so that if this week others would like to kind of uh, add what they think is uh, they, they, you know, they want to do on this repo. And then okay. maybe in the next meeting, that'll be easy for people to kind of do a pull request and it'll be easy to kind of review on the same screen. Because if you do a pull request, then what I can do here is I can actually see all those branches here that you have. Okay. And then clone them. And not everybody will have to share the screen at that point. You can, um, you have to guide me. I've never done this. I've done folk. I guess uh, I have done. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, and that, that'll just, be useful for everyone. Yeah. So what I did was I went to your link. And right. from there, I used a fork option here. And that created which, your own. Yeah. Yes. So everyone then, who is not aware about the Git, if you notice on the top, the repo name is same. And but it starts under the Sandeep search repo, Git repo. So it's Sandeep had a space where he can do things and you know complete his thing. Now, once he's done his changes, uh, can you do the pull request button on there? OK. Uh, pull. On pull the window. request. Yeah. New pull request. New pull request, yes. And then so, here it is yeah. that it will be written back to post Saurav from this uh, Sandeep search Git repo. There is right now nothing, but you know, if you would have made any changes, maybe make a change and then we'll see it. Okay, this goes to right now. It's all going to Sandeep set branch. So if you are cloning this, don't worry, right. it'll go. You'll have to, yeah, because if you are as your dev, DevOps, then for the first time when you connect to Git, it asks you for authorization. Well, it'll authorize you once you're done with it. So yeah, as I if, just hope I remember my password. Okay, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. You know, that, that's, that's the good thing now that if you forgot your password, there are 100 ways to kind of figure it out now. <laughs> Anchor, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you kind of close or fork this uh, in this week and do your changes and you keep on committing your changes, they are still storing on your branch. So you cannot, let's put it this way, you cannot harm the main branch, which is under my Git account until unless I approve your pull requests. So don't worry, you know, go ahead, fork it, whatever you think is the right way to write this code, uh, do that. And uh, now we'll see when Sandeep sir goes back and tries to create a pull request. Now, should I create a pull request again? Yeah, it should not have been there, I guess. Let's go to your branch. Mm, I should think uh, now. Sorry. I should sync. Yeah, you should sync now. So yeah, any syncs that you are doing on your branch, that's OK, because it goes and sits on your Git repo. It doesn't impact the main branch. For impacting anything on the main branch, it will require approval from me because that, that branch holds uh, inside my Git account. Why does it take so much time? For the first time, I guess it takes time to kind of authorize you and all. 
once it is done now i don't have any problems like i work on azure devops as well as on git for the first time it takes a while to kind of synchronize the changes so yeah anyone else who have tried forking it or you know was thinking to code against it and was not able to do it i saw sam you liked it but <laughs> i'm looking at it right now i was unable to work on it a bit of a hectic day really yeah that's okay I, I just want to understand that if anyone have any problems in cloning this or copying this, we should figure that out. No, no, it's fine. I've been working with GitHub and DevOps for quite some time, so a bit familiar. Okay, so they said maybe you want to reload the window or close the VS code and open it again. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Is Git, GitHub very much different from DevOps, so it, it's almost no, same. it's same, it's same, it's fine. almost same. Yeah, yeah. It's just then, so we created one branch. Is it for for Sandeep, and then he is trying to submit his changes to the branch? No. So the way it works uh, in Git or in Azure DevOps is a branch is created if all the accounts are part of the same organization. Now okay. GitHub is more public, right? Okay. So when I create a project and I make it public, and if you want to contribute on it, what you can do is okay. you can fork it, which means you are taking a copy of my code and okay. putting it on your own GitHub account. You do all your changes, and then okay. if you want to kind of submit those changes back to the main uh, original right. uh, repo, then you need to create a pull request, which then that person approves. Okay. Is there any uh, URL for these steps or something? Or oh, we can go to Microsoft Learn and then go through it. I I can actually let's let's do it. I I'll rather do it otherwise. Uh, let me let me share my screen, and Sandeep, and maybe I'll. Uh, yours is public, Sandeep, sir. Yeah, I think it's public. Oh. Let me let me yeah, public. It's public. Okay, oh, so let me share my screen and I'll just show you how Microsoft does it because it's very important that we as developers should also contribute to the bigger source code. So Microsoft have a Git repo called Microsoft AL guideline where there is a framework that, <clears throat> that you need to follow if you want to contribute to this repo. And if you look at it, there are 22 folks. That means there are 22 people who have an active copy of this branch, which are doing something, people who are doing something. And then, you know, there is a way that uh, you can also create issues. Once, like if I go back to the folk branch that I've created, which is this. Now, any change that I'll do kind of gets stored into this. And then if I have to kind of uh, send it back, then I can create a pull request on it. If I'm not doing anything on this for, let's say, six months or something, I can uh, pull back. And if Microsoft is changing their branch continuously, I can fetch the latest kind of source from Microsoft. I don't have to refork it if required. So, mm -hmm. Sandeep, do you want to share your link so that I can fork your branch? In the chat. Yeah, posting. Okay. Done. Okay. So, okay. Oh, it actually took it to my branch. Can you just copy the URL from the top? It's taking it back to my branch. Uh, should I search for it? What is your ID? Yeah, I've done now. Okay.
Okay, so let me go back here. Here it is. Now this is actually a fork of the branch that I have. So I don't know whether it works or not, but let's give it a try. If I fork this branch, it may kind of go into round robin. So this is, you have any other public branches? Yeah, I will have. I don't think so. There's only one branch which is public. I can make other yeah, just, branches. Yeah, just create a public branch because this will kind of go into loop that you fork my branch and then I fork your branch and it goes back to my branch. <laughs> New repository. Yes. So I name it as test we test open discussion. Yeah. And I will make it public. And a readme file get ignored. Visual Studio and created. And okay. I let me just it. yeah, I can see it here. So let's assume this is the branch that we are using for doing some share code. Okay. Now I am not part of the same organization or the same company where Sandeep Sir is. So what I can do is I can fork it because it's a public branch and this will create a test PC open discussion under my branch, uh, under my Git account. Once it kind of does that, what I'll do is I'll clone this on my VS code. And let me go back mm -hmm. here. I'll do a bit clone. And let me put it somewhere here. And let's say it, uh -oh. Let's say this as dim. Okay. This will get cloned here and I can open it here. That's it. Okay. So this is a branch. Now this is kind of my own space of Sandeep Set branch. Now what I'll do is I should be creating a branch of my own. I should never write to main. That's kind of thumb rule that Microsoft follows or everybody follows and get a space. My branch is in place and I want to change the readme. This is my suggestion on the readme file. And please accept these changes. Okay. I did my changes. I saw one file changed. Update that. Okay. Interesting. And then publish the branch. Now what I'm doing and uh, uh, what I've done is I've created a branch in my space. So now if I see, I have a branch sort of test inside my public GitHub account. I can do a pull request and this is I'm only doing right now in here. And let me do a Create pull request. Now this I have no conflict. And then I cannot branch add more commits. Okay. That's why changes. This is done, right? The branch has no conflict with the base branch. Right, access to this repository can merge. Okay, so now Sandeep sir should have a, re a review pending on his end. Sandeep, show? Sir, yes, let's see that. In fact, the best part is it has sent me an email. Yes, so send you an email that somebody did some changes. Hmm. Now I can click on this. I'll show you that Saurav have made some changes with the comment called testing. He can review it from file changed. Uh, if if he agrees to this, he can approve this, and that way these changes will be part of the actual main branch from Sandeep sir. Where is the approval button? So Saurav, uh, yes. Uh, so at a, so we need to do only create pull request, and that's it. That's it. Yeah, that'll even come to me. Even, even I have a fork your repository and 
did some, I mean, just write a feedback and then just create a pull request. So I think you you might get that from my side as well. I got it. Yeah, three, uh, five minutes ago, I guess. Yeah, OK. You yeah. are not logged in right now. It says you need to sign in. OK. So yeah, so yeah. maybe. Because once you are there and you click on that pull request, you will be able to see the possibility to kind of merge it. Come down. Yeah. Merge pull request. Yeah. So now you can merge it if required. Confirm. And once you confirm it, it becomes part of the main branch of your branch. So now my main branch will have this file. Yes, you will have that change which I have written on the README. README. Yeah, so that. what's that uh, once we are creating that uh, create pull request, what's that close pull request? Oh, that close. you should not do the close pull request because that will be done by once Adeep said like if I approve your changes that will automatically get closed. Okay. Okay, okay, because you don't have rights like I didn't have rights to write back to Sandeep's uh, branch. Okay. So it means uh, if it gets approved, you can cancel the request, right? Yeah, you can cancel it if if you think that you need to kind of go back and do it. Okay. So yeah, on this on the similar lines, and I'll, I'll share my screen. I have a sure. request here. On the similar lines, uh, anybody who's interested can actually start forking this branch. PC open samples. And then as you as Avinav just said that he did that and he made a change. I can see how many people are actively working on it, but based on how many people forked it, assuming that people are working on it at that time. Uh, I can see that there is one pull request open. I can see who created it, what he put on the comment when he was doing it. I can check what he has changed. You have added the word test here in my placeholder.txt file. And he made one comment till now into this. And then if needed, I can always go ahead and either approve this or deal, you know, reject this. It's up to the person what, who is doing uh, it. Sorry, what if we have to do some changes in that? Uh, okay, you sh I think there should be a way to clone it as in git hybrid. Let, okay, sorry, as your demo packet, let's see. There is a way. Let me see if it kind of is available in the project that we have. Okay. No, no, I mean saying uh, while approving any pull request, can we make changes to that, uh, you know, whatever changes has been committed? Whatever changes has been committed by the other person, right? Yeah, can we amend that? Can we verify it? How do we verify it and then amend it or approve? Let's say if he has written maybe 60 lines of code, I just want to approve for 58 line code and then merge it into my branch. Is it possible or I need to do either approve all of the code or I need to disapprove all the code? I think here it's full. I am not that with this but let's this review changes on the on the right side review changes on the right oh, side sorry. green button yeah, yeah. review changes okay. comment approve reject changes okay so there's only one file but yeah as an as of devops you can also add comments on the places which you want but i'm looking for the yeah. partial one Hmm. Avnav, can you make one more file change somewhere or add a new file? Let's see. Then I get an option because that's just one file. And Avnav, if you are speaking, you're yeah, me. doing, doing, doing. Okay, okay. Yes. Check out with CLI GH. Check out with GitHub desktop. Hmm. 
Can you see I've done one publish? Yeah, I see two pull requests now. Can just request more. And then I see that you have also again changed only one file. You can edit it, right? I can edit as as a text editor, but then uh, let's see. Once I'm not plus one more, just want to see if there are two files. Can we do one as an approve, more or less? Yeah, oh, just... you have done two, right? Yeah, placeholder dot text is the original one. This I've not done. Oh, so let me just create one more file. I'll just create one sample file. Fifty thousand. Maybe just a text file report. Was I guess there was a selective kind of mode that you can do a cherry pick, right? One more file. Oh, I have to do the pull request, right? Yeah, you'll have to do the pull request. Okay. I'm doing that now. Based on these different merge types, I guess there is a way. Can you to check do... Sora? Uh, okay, I'll refresh this. Mm -hmm. Oh, file change too. Okay. Now, if I only want to take one of these, okay, I can delete the file. Oh. Okay. This is an hello world.txt inside this. And then what is this? Review changes. I think there is a merge type somewhere here where you can define what kind of merge you are doing. Create a merge commit. All commit to this branch will be added to the base branch. Squash and merge. The two commits from this branch will be combined into one. Rebase and merge. The two commits from this branch will be rebased and added to the base branch, but it doesn't let you do cherry pick. Hmm. DevOps have a cherry pick option where you can choose what you want. I'm pretty sure it will be here. Maybe I haven't set the merge policies of this branch in a way that I can do cherry pick. Hmm. Even on my screen, I can see the changes made by Sneep, sir. Yeah, it's a, it's a very open environment. Anybody can see it other than the changes on the master branch. As, because all these are public reports, so everyone can see everybody's code. That's not a problem. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, okay, so... I'm kind of stuck here. I was unable to do a second pull request. No, so your your file would have been added onto the existing pull request until unless that pull request gets closed, it'll, mm -hmm. it'll, you know all the commits kind of become part of it. So like you added the stable extension. Yeah. Yeah. So until unless a pull request is closed, all the commits that you make kind of automatically goes into that single pull request that's still active. Okay. Fine. So if let's give it a try. If I try to drop one file and only keep one file. Let's say drop this. Okay. 
and then delete. I've added this and create a new branch and start a project. Okay. From where it deleted it? Is it from your branch or from my branch? Deleted. This is from your branch. So now if I go to the pull request, see this. I have four commits now where I have deleted a file. And now if I do an approve or merge of this, I should only get one file into the main branch. Let's test this out. Okay. Sandeep said your kind of pull request is closed now. So any more changes that you'll do, you'll have to kind of create a pull request again. Now, if I come to BC samples, I should be seeing that there are actually 16 commits where uh, Sandeep said main branch is kind of pulled back into the actual my branch or oh, sorry my, my repo so now if i look at into the source where sandeep said would have made some changes which is this file the other file did not came over but this came over and now anybody who will fork it from now will also get this file because now it's kind of part of the main repo so like in case of avinav where you are uh, what you can do is uh, you should be able to uh, yeah when you come to your page you can do this fetch upstream to take sandeep search changes which i have approved and they are part of the of my branch now if you do the fetch and merge all the changes which are already approved in the main branch will kind of come to your uh, your own GitHub branch into it. Yeah, right. Right. let me let me check that as well. So that way you are not behind if you know if you're not here for a week and we do some changes and review and you just want to see what other people have changed, you can just do a fetch and merge to get the latest code. You don't have to fork it again and again. 12 seconds ago. Yeah, custom workflow subscriber coordinate dot AL. Yeah, now that's part of your area. So right. Now you don't have to kind of refork it. If you go behind somewhere, you can always overwrite it more or less at that point. Okay, so it, we have to we have to fork it once, and then we need to just fetch upstream always. Yes. With the main and latest code. Yes. Okay. And it it has deleted the file that you ignored. So yes. In right. my in your environment. Space. Yes. Yeah. Even in my VS code, uh, the moment I synced, it got oh. <laughs> Okay. So yes, uh, okay, sir, uh, you can delete the files that are coming into the pull request and that kind of removed uh, that file from every space that it is part of. All right, thank you. And then you can sel selectively put it into it. Okay, so yeah, give it a try, everyone. Uh, if you have time, I see one more fork happened. I see three people right now. Um, well, the way I was thinking about it uh, today is as we were talking about, I created this status field here on the customer table that's added onto the page. The next thing was to kind of uh, restrict creation of document, or should we restrict at the creation or? At the posting of it, or let Microsoft do the posting part and then stop it. So, in fact, uh, uh, any modification once it has been sent to approval should also not be allowed. Yes, that that's that's sure. What what I'm saying is uh, because I was thinking from the perspective of uh, like when you create a new sales order because we were trying to restrict it to the sales. Should we restrict it if the customer is blocked or should we let it create it, but don't let it post? It should not create it. It should not let the creation selection. Yeah. So Aura, what I what I see is, I mean, we can what we can do is at a time of customer creations, we can put a rest record restrictions and at the time of sales order creation or any any sales invoice or sales return order, 
we can use that on on validate of a sell to customer number to check the record restriction of that customer hmm okay as at, at the time of creation the way i was thinking about it and maybe i'm completely wrong is the way document works right so uh when the new customer is created it kind of remains the, at the status as open and until unless that customer is released it cannot be used anywhere else and i am trying to eliminate the record restriction because i actually want to make it part of the workflow because it's a part of the workflow of a standard workflow where it goes into the record restriction and then the standard microsoft code automatically stops it if it becomes a restricted record at that point so like when you try to create the sales order and maybe let's go there mm. okay when this validation happens somewhere down here before it actually gets done it checks the blocked uh, customer on docs which validate that this is this customer is blocked for these kind of documents or not and that's a method in your customer table itself where it checks based on the document type and the customer number that is it blocked or not and if you go there you will actually see that there is an event available at that point which will allow you to do your custom checks before the microsoft check happens which is somewhere here. Uh, check block customer on journals, and then there is a check block customer on documents. It it checks whatever it needs to standard Microsoft. But if you want to kind of do your bit, you can do it here because at this point there is an event available, and that kind of makes it easier because right now we are not thinking about journals. But we, if we have to, we can just do it, I guess, for any kind of uh, uses of it, like based on irrespective of the source type, I can just check that, you know, I, it's not allowed because it's right now not released, more or less. So that way, the system will stop it from the creation of sales order as it's happening. So now what else is in the plan? As in, we have a new field in the table and page. Uh, and I'll, I'll merge these changes into the master. You guys can fork it again. And then we are doing a check when a new document is created. As soon as the new customer will be added, it will be of the default status, which is zero which will be open, I guess. Yes. And then how should I force? Oh, it's it's a force because he cannot, the, the users cannot create a sales order at that point. So that will kind of triggers a customer approval from the user. Now, what are the things that are pending? One is uh, you have to change the field at the time of approval. From yes, open to release. change the status during approval. Okay. And then we also have to change the status as we were saying during modify of customer or on what you said bank account number change and then the, i guess uh, vijay said on default dimension change okay then what else we have a field we have added the restriction the new document is created. We'll change the status during approval and we'll change the status during modify and, and this. And 
this check also has to be done at the time of uh, release of the document and posting of the document because what if the document is open and, and then it, later yeah. on okay check during posting and release okay anything else that we discussed let me open the last week if i have it somewhere no so we didn't record this i guess somewhere so yeah anybody who's interested i'll i'll must uh, i'll kind of do this uh, pull request back into the master and the intention is not to see how great a developer you are but just to kind of understand the style of coding uh, in terms of does it aligns to what microsoft is suggesting and maybe you know better than me or someone else or somebody else knows better than us so that we can understand what are the right uh, let's say events to use or right uh, you know methods what should be these last two parameters here and what does i mean when you subscribe to an event so i guess that's what is what we are looking for it's not about your expertise as a developer or, or not Okay, so anything else before we wrap for tonight? So there is a there is a new feature that I have come across. Yes, sir. Um, I am just typing the URL. So it's an extension created by Hogard. Oh yeah, so, that that's uh, yeah, design <laughs> extension. Yeah, we have seen it. I guess in yeah, simply object designer. And this looks very interesting, but I was like uh, not able to think of it, uses of it, or the advantage or disadvantage of it. What would be here? I mean, so it's it's more about uh, for customers who think that they can do some of their development. It's it's majorly around the basic development that a customer thinks that he can do, and like. Uh, yeah. Most of our CL customer think that they can add a field and then they can expose it on a page and that's what it needs. My partner is charging six hours for me because he's saying I have to write a <laughs> test around it. Then, you know, for those Absolutely. kind of situation, it's it's a super cool feature and it works. If if you are thinking from the developer mindset, then it works aligning how the designer extension work in the center more or less. Yeah, but it create extension for each feature that I, we are adding, right? And then, right. And then there will be multiple extension created and then. Uh, right. And, and that's, that's, I guess that's the problem with the designer extension that everybody is noticing. That a new customer who goes into SaaS or business center and he yeah. have seen these marketing videos of design mode. Uh, you go yeah. there after a week and you see hundreds of extension. Yeah, and they, they are unmanageable. So we suggest customers not to create it unless it's absolutely needed because the, the major problem is that it randomly blocks the object ID, which we cannot control how it does. Like oh. it'll take 50,000, it'll begin with 50,000 and then maybe you create a 550,000 object and then you end up saying, oh, that page yeah, extension ID is already used. Yeah, and that will be a problem. I mean, if it is picking randomly IDs, it'll take the next available ID, not randomly, but yeah. So right yeah, now, let's I mean, say you have an app which is using five page extension, and you are doing a development which requires seven more extensions. You add it here, absolutely. and by that time, somebody uses it. Yeah. So as a developer, it will make our life more challenging. I was thinking about it and maybe I'll submit an idea on Microsoft idea that either remove this or make a designer extension in a way that there is one designer extension per tenant. Whatever Microsoft does, you know, it should always try to add the new design changes into the same designer mode extension if there is one. It's hard to manage for partners for sure. Absolutely. 
let's see if they approve that and if boards goes into it we'll see how that goes yeah or even better if microsoft can create something like this to write the code to create a you know developer friendly object designer where we can create the tables more easily or the pages more easily like we used to do in 2016 or you know, yeah. previous versions you AZ tool is, I think, more or less covers. Yeah, AL, AL, AZ is a great extension in Business Central, mm -hmm. uh, which which is super cool in terms of using a wizard if you have to. So it gives you all legacy type, right? You can define all the fields property and then it'll end up. Yeah, we, we used it, but it is still limited. I mean, in terms of properties and everything. Yeah, now, yeah. yeah, if that way, right. So yeah, and next week is a off. Uh, I'll not be available next week. It's my wife's birthday, and I don't want to be dead. <laughs> so, Important. Yeah, we'll not be doing it on twenty sixth, but then I'll be available on fifth. So next time we'll meet on fifth. And in the meantime, anybody have any doubts? Just send me an email about uh, how to contribute on this repo. I'll be able to help. I'm pretty sure. And then also think about what we want to do once this is over, because this is not a big one. I just wanted to kind of pick something so that we have a head start on doing some kind of development as a team. And then later on, we can maybe try to, as Sandeep Sir was saying, try to find out the problems that we have and make them generic so that they can be utilized somewhere else also. Okay. Sounds good then. Enjoy your weekend and I'll continue with my goal. Time for new next beer. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. It was pretty interesting Thank you. today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah.